Good morning, and welcome to Our Lady of Victory Cathedral. As we celebrate the second Sunday of Easter, which is Divine Mercy Sunday, our professional hymn is found in the Missalette, number 344, We Walk by Faith, number 344. of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. We join with those that are praying with us by means of television today on this Divine Mercy Sunday. We pray God's mercy in a very special way upon all the sick and the suffering and the dying. And today we are joined by some communicants from, our, from Nazareth Academy Catholic School we have five children that will be receiving First Holy Communion today on this Divine Mercy Sunday. What a beautiful way to continue to celebrate God's love for us in Christ through the reception of Holy Communion. We cry out for mercy, and it is mercy that Jesus has come to bring to us. But it's that very mercy that Jesus wants us to share with one another. And for those times in which we have failed to do so, we ask the Lord, for compassion and for forgiveness. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have in my thoughts, in my words, in what I have done, and in what I have done. Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
Let us pray. God of everlasting mercy, who in the very recurrence of the Paschal Feast kindle the faith of the people you have made your own, increase, we pray, the grace you have bestowed that all may grasp and rightly understand in what font they have been washed, by whose spirit they have been reborn, by whose blood they have been redeemed. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The community of believers was of one heart and mind, and no one claimed that any of his possessions was his own, but they had everything in common. With great power, the apostles bore witness to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus and great favor was accorded them all. There was no needy person among them, for those who owned property or houses would sell them, bring the proceeds of the sale, and put them at the feet of the apostles. And they were distributed to each according to need. The Word of the Lord. from the first letter of St. John. 
Beloved, everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ is begotten by God, and everyone who loves the Father loves also the one begotten by him. In this way, we know that we love the children of God when we love God and obey his commandments. For the love of God is this, that we keep his commandments. And his commandments are not burdensome, for whoever is begotten by God conquers the world. And the victory that conquers the world is our faith. Who indeed is the victor over the world, but the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God. This is the one who came through water and blood, Jesus Christ, not by water alone, but by water and blood. The Spirit is the one that testifies, and the Spirit is truth. The Word of the Lord. Gospel according to John. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the doors were locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. Whose sins you forgive are forgiven them, and whose sins you retain are retained. Thomas, called Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples said to him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger into the nail marks, and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. Now a week later, his disciples were again inside, and Thomas was with them. Jesus came, although the doors were locked, and stood in their midst and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here, and see my hands, and bring your hand and put it into my side, and do not be unbelieving, but believe. Thomas answered and said to him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you come to believe because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and have believed. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples that are not written in this book, but these are written that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that through this belief you may have life in his name. The Gospel 
of the Lord. Blessed are those who have not seen and have believed. Thomas was filled with doubt, but it was Jesus who reassured him that he was alive. Jesus did not scold Thomas, nor did he scold or reprimand the other disciples who had left him and abandoned him, who had forsaken him while he hung upon the cross. It was Jesus who knew they were filled with fear and they were hiding away behind locked doors and Jesus walked right through those doors and the first thing he said to them was peace be with you. And then he breathed on them and they received the Holy Spirit and he said, whose sins you forgive are forgiven them and whose sins you retained are retained. Jesus gave them a mission, be merciful forgive, and in that way come to believe evermore in my presence and in my name. Yes, Jesus wants us to be merciful, just as our Heavenly Father is merciful. That's the message that we celebrate today, this week after the beautiful celebration of Easter. This is Divine Mercy Sunday, in which we again have the opportunity to partake of God's love which is unlimited, which is available to every one of us, especially the greatest amongst us that are sinners. Jesus leaves none of us out. He wants us not to wallow in grief or he does not want us to persist in our sins, but he wants us to be free, not enslaved. He wants us to come to know that when we receive his mercy, then we have to also receive the message that he sends to us and the mission that comes with it, and that is that we must bring that mercy to all the world, a world that cries out for mercy, a world that doesn't know peace because they do not know God. We are messengers as much as St. Faustina was a messenger of mercy so many years ago when Jesus appeared to her, that uneducated nun who would later, amidst a lot of turmoil in her own life and in the world itself and a lot of people who didn't believe her, she would come to produce a diary of more than 600 pages which beautifully speaks of God's love for us in Christ. And we can pray and sing the chaplet of the divine mercy, reminding us to trust in Jesus and to pray that mercy will come upon us and all the world. Jesus wants us to know peace. And so often in our lives, we don't know that peace because we don't know Jesus' mercy. We hold on to our sins. We actually believe that we can't be forgiven or that God will never be merciful to us or that we're an unworthy of that mercy and we're reminded on this Divine Mercy Sunday that that is not what we believe because that is not of Jesus. Jesus wants every one of us to know his mercy regardless of what we have done in the past, regardless of how many times we have fallen. Jesus says, let me pick you up, let me free you from your enslavement. Not because we deserve it, but because Jesus has chosen through God's love to offer it to us. And when we refuse it, we refuse Jesus. When we refuse his mercy, and why, the very reason why he died on the cross for us means nothing. When we accept it, we celebrate with Jesus his very love of why he was willing and wanting to die for us so that we can come to know the new life that he brings to us. Pope Francis says it so clearly. He says, Dear brothers and sisters, let us not be close to the newness that God wants to bring into our lives. Are we often weary, disheartened, and sad? Do we feel weighed down by our sins? Do we think that we won't be able to cope? 
Let us not close our hearts. Let us not lose confidence. Let us never give up. There are no situations which God cannot change. There is no sin which he cannot forgive. If only we open ourselves to him. And our Holy Father goes on to state, let the risen Jesus enter your life. Welcome him as a friend with trust. He is life. If up till now you have kept him at a distance, step forward. He will receive you with open arms. If you have been indifferent, take a risk. You won't be disappointed. If following him seems difficult, don't be afraid. Trust him. Be confident that he is close to you. He is with you. And he will give you the peace you are looking for and the strength to live as he would have you do. That's the reminder of what Jesus wants us to experience. That's the kind of peace that we seek. We know the world will not ever be able to offer us that kind of peace. Only Jesus does. But it's the peace we hunger for. Jesus knew that. That's why, as we hear in the gospel today, that he didn't reprimand his disciples. They didn't need to be scolded. They knew what they had done. They knew they abandoned Jesus. Just as we are well aware when we do the same by our sinfulness. Jesus didn't have to point out the obvious. He came to give to them what they most hungered for at that moment, and that was peace. And peace and mercy go hand in hand. So when we strive to have peace in our hearts through Christ, then we become better as husbands and wives. We become better in, as a family member. We become better as a Christian. When we seek the peace that only Jesus brings, then we can be merciful to each other. But if we're divided apart within ourselves, our families will be divided as well. Jesus wants us to be at peace. And he wants us to be in communion with one another. Blessed Teresa of Calcutta says, If we have no peace, it is because we have forgotten that we belong to one another. You see, that's the message of the Acts of the Apostles. We hear some of that today. That all of the brothers and sisters in Christ gathered together and they shared everything in common. And that there was no one in need. That wasn't communism. That was a free choice in how they chose to live. That was peace. The peace that they knew Jesus gave to them in creating the Christian community. And if people needed something, they came in and they shared. They didn't have to be asked. They volunteered. There was no selfishness, no self-centeredness. There was no idea of it's mine and not yours. It was ours together. And the early Christian church, amidst all the persecution, they were at peace. That's how we want our families to be. It means that husbands and wives have to be more merciful to each other. They have to be willing to forgive each other and work at that forgiveness. Family members have to get over divisions. They have to get over hatred and discord. Otherwise, they will not know peace. None of us will. And maybe it's one family at a time that if this family becomes more peaceful and this family becomes more peaceful, you see that our parish becomes more peaceful and the church itself and the world universal becomes more at peace in Christ. Maybe it just begins in one marriage at a time between two friends who forgive are when we accept finally that God can forgive us in Christ. Maybe it begins just with me being at peace. That's the message of divine mercy, that Jesus has come indeed to free us. And if we want to know the mercy of Jesus, then we have to share that mercy with one another. These children that will receive First Holy Communion today are an example of what we have to work for. That we have to show them that we can live in a world that God has given to us and be at peace with one another as brothers and sisters. 
that we can live in a world in which there is healing in marriages and there is hope in families. We can live in a world that God has given to us and that Jesus has come to save. We can live in a world in which peace is possible, not war, not division. The early church was of one mind and one heart and they shared everything in common. They were merciful to each other and they forgave one another. Let's create our families in that way. Let us accept the mercy of Jesus who died for love of us so that we could live for love of him. Rejoicing in the peace and the mercy that Jesus brings, we profess what we believe as his followers. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, the only Our risen Lord reminds us in this time of Easter that He is mercy and that He wants us to accept His gift. And so we open our hearts to the Lord and ask that He answer our prayers. For Pope Francis and all leaders throughout the church, as they bear witness to the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, we pray to the Lord, Lord hear that the peace of our risen Lord will dwell in the heart of every governmental leader in the world. We pray to the Lord, Lord hear for those who doubt, for those who have lost their faith, for those who have not yet found faith in God. We pray to the Lord. For all the newly initiated Christians, especially those among us in our own parish, we pray to the Lord, Lord that on this Divine Mercy Sunday, we will be merciful in our words and actions each day as we reflect our belief in the risen Lord. We pray to the Lord. That the, those who receive First Communion today will continue to grow in faith, hope, and love. We pray to the Lord. Lord for all the faithful departed and for the parishioners and benefactors for whom we offer this Mass, we pray to the Lord. Lord for the needs listed in our parish intention book, 
and for those we hold in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord Father, we are grateful for the mercy you bring to us. Jesus, our Savior, is mercy itself. Help his love that has been poured out for us on the cross flow within us, that as he is merciful, so we will be merciful to one another. And Father, we ask that you accept these prayers and to answer them according to your will through Christ our Lord. Our hymn for the presentation of the gifts is number 326, Love Divine, All Love Excelling, number 326.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the oblations of your people and of those you have brought to new birth, that renewed by confession of your name and by baptism, they may attain unending happiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. With Lift up your hearts. Your Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But in this time, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death, and by rising, restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Therefore, Almighty Father, we bless through Jesus Christ, your Son, who comes in your name. He himself is the word that brings salvation, the hand you extend to sinners, the way by which your peace is offered to us. When we ourselves had turned away from you on account of our sins, you brought us back to be reconciled, O Lord, so that converted at last to you, we might love one another through your Son, whom for our sake you handed over to death. And now celebrating the reconciliation Christ has brought us, we entreat you, sanctify these gifts by the outpouring of your Spirit, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, whose command we fulfill when we celebrate these mysteries. For when about to give us life to set us free, as he reclined at supper, he himself took bread into his hands. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, on that same evening, he took the chalice of blessing in his hands, confessing your mercy, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith.
celebrating therefore the memorial of the death and resurrection of your son who left us this pledge of his love we offer you what you have bestowed on us the sacrifice of perfect reconciliation holy father we humbly beseech you to accept us also together with your son and in the saving banquet graciously to endow us with his very spirit who takes away everything that estranges us from one another may he make your church a sign of unity and an instrument of peace among all people may he keep us in communion with francis our pope and david our bishop and all the bishops in your entire people just as you have gathered us now at the table of your son so also bring us together with the glorious virgin mary mother of god with blessed joseph her spouse with your blessed apostles and all the saints with our brothers and sisters and those of every race and tongue who have died in your friendship bring us to share with them the unending banquet of unity in a new heaven and a new earth where the fullness of your peace will shine forth in Christ Jesus our Lord. Through him and with him and in him, O oh God, O oh mighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours for ever and ever. The Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Our communion hymn will be number 294, Shepherd of Souls, Refresh and Bless, number 294.
Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that our reception of this Paschal Sacrament may have a continuing effect in our minds and hearts through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia. Our recessional hymn is number two oh nine. Christ the Lord is risen today, number 209.